The impact of the natural gas explosion that sent a ball of flames into the sky near Prince George yesterday are being felt across the province. Fortis BC is urging customers to cut back their use or we could face a natural gas shortage. Tonight, UBC issued an urgent community alert for dozens of its buildings on campus, saying because the campus is located at the end of the gas line, if Fortis were to run out of gas, heating, hot water and cooking could be affected as early as later tonight or tomorrow morning. In the meantime, Fortis has asked customers, including UBC, to reduce their non-essential use of natural gas. We have the vast majority of UBC buildings are in a district energy heating system. Um, and which uh, can switch from natural gas to other forms of energy. But there are 34 Vancouver campus buildings which uh, could have their heat and hot water impacted uh, should the gas supply um, uh, be constrained. And so we're trying to take precautionary measures to A, let our community know about conservation, encourage them um, to say, like, to, to look at what they're doing in, in order to conserve. Meanwhile, Rogers has stopped production at its Vancouver sugar refinery to save natural gas as well. It says their Alberta factory and another sugar refinery in Montreal can pick up production in the short term. The gas shortage is affecting about 70% of Fortis BC customers, and Fortis says they've already noticed a 20% reduction in usage here in BC. As the gas line distributor continues to make its plea, officials are busy trying to figure out what caused that massive gas pipeline blast near Prince George last night. It eventually burned out and no one was hurt, but as Raff Rafferty Baker reports, many people nearby are still shaken. The smoke has cleared and residents at the Clayton Tanay Reserve are allowed back in their homes. Most of the 80 or so people living here spent last night in hotels in Prince George. RCMP and Enbridge staff are securing the area around the pipeline, making sure nobody gets near the site of the rupture. It's calm here now, but late yesterday, it was a very different story. My whole house shook, and I thought it was like thunder, like a really loud thunder. And I got up and looked out my front window, and I had just seen this big fireball. Like, it was huge and, and loud. Seymour lives a couple kilometers from where the pipeline burst, but she still says small black pebble or ash was falling on her head. You could feel the heat and you could feel whatever was falling from the air. Clayley Tanay residents describe a loud, constant roar while the fire was burning. Enbridge depressurized the affected section of pipeline and let the fire burn itself out. I am concerned. I've always been concerned about that pipeline. And, um, they have two lines there. And you hear about all the gas line explosions all over and I'm always worried about this one. After seeing that last night, like, a lot of people are scared to come home, but I'm coming home. Local industry has been hampered by the incident, too. Canfor had to shut down two of its mills today due to a lack of gas. The company has found alternate fuel for two other mills. So far, RCMP are still leading the investigation into the explosion until they can rule out anything suspicious about the incident. Rafferty Baker, CBC News, Prince George. And the impact of the pipeline explosion is being felt outside of our province as well. Residents of Washington State are also being affected. The pipeline that exploded yesterday is part of the T-South system, which extends across the border into Washington State. So residents there are also being asked to turn down their thermostats and help conserve natural gas. The disruption in Washington will have further impact here in Canada too. Since oil refineries in the states rely on Canadian natural gas, Prices at the pump are expected to spike. Meanwhile, Premier John Horgan and Washington State Governor Jay Inslee are reaffirming their commitment to growing the Pacific Northwest. It is uh, doubly a joy in that we share so many of, of our uh, values across the border and that translates to policies that are in common to help our uh, economies grow. And I don't think you can find any to even states that have as much as common as we do. Speaking at a business conference, the pair committed to a memorandum of understanding to act on several areas of growth. Those include the innovation economy, fighting climate change, and improving transportation connectivity. The MOU also highlights protecting endangered southern resident killer whales.